So let's get this straight. People are up to date on the latest trend when it comes to dancing, songs, what have you, food, who who can make the funkiest food combinations popular. We're all abreast to that, right? But when it comes to something that's important as to your health, it's, it's like crickets in the background. I didn't know that there was a thing that I syphilis was a thing until I drove up La Brea this morning minding my own business and see this big huge billboard talking about some eye syphilis I knew it wasn't a joke but I was thinking it was a joke I'm like why am I just now hearing about this I create content and I'm on social media so you know scouring the web and, and looking for you know what's what's going on in the world current events I did not stumble across anything suggesting that there was a eye syphilis epidemic until today so that makes you wonder why aren't more people talking about this cdc was drowned us when it came to COVID, but they're saying that this is a epidemic so why aren't more people talking about it it makes you wonder i'll be back everybody thank you for coming back those who are subscribed thank you for coming back those who aren't subscribed i appreciate your support and check out the other videos and you know see what this channel is talking about and subscribe okay so i appreciate you listening to my you know vent in the beginning of this video it's just you know it's it's irritating finding out that there's some health issues or some things going on that's a danger to people's health and you don't hear about it but you hear about the stupidest things if i you know about celebrity news and things that just really you know why aren't more things being discussed that you know is it can be an issue to someone's health anyway um i saw i did a little research and i came across a few articles i like to share I'd like to share with you guys, um, just, you know, you, you guys need to exercise. You guys need to exercise more caution when it comes to picking out people that you going to, you know, spend the night with. And you know what I mean when I say spend the night, spend the night with, I'm not talking about you guys coming together and playing some cards or dominoes. You know, I'm kind of speaking, you know, kind of, I'm speaking in codes for, you know, little virgin ears. But you guys need to be a little more selective. You know, some of you guys take more time picking out an ensemble and shoes than you do some random hookup. It's kind of ludicrous and very dangerous, not just in regards to STDs, but you don't know who you taking home or who you going home with or who you hooking with, hooking up with in the back seat. You know, are your friends and family going to see you the next day or are you going to be missing? that's some, that's real talk let's get into this eye syphilis another word medical term for it is ocular syphilis is untreated syphilis and it can affect your eyes and threaten your vision ocular syphilis is best diagnosed and treated early diagnosed can be tricky because it can affect any part of your eye and can look like any number of eye infections most often it can look like uveitis uveitis is a rare condition in which all or part of the uv middle layer of the wall of the eye becomes inflamed the uv includes the includes the carotid the ciliary body and the iris uveitis may also affect the lens retina optic nerve and vitreous humor gel-like fluid inside the eye ocular syphilis is an eye condition that can happen if you have syphilis 
that isn't treated. Syphilis is an STD, a bacterial infection. The infection can also spread to the fetus through pregnancy. Untreated syphilis can move into other organs and body systems, including your nervous system and your brain. Untreated syphilis can also affect your eyes, ocular syphilis or eye syphilis, or your ears. Doctors are seeing more patients with unusual vision and eye symptoms due to the sexually transmitted infection. Amid the current syphilis epidemic in the U.S., a January 2024 CDC report stated that more than 207,000 Americans were diagnosed with syphilis, the highest number reported since the 1950s. If left untreated, the infection can lead to cases ocular syphilis. So basically, some people don't even know that they have syphilis. And then when it goes untreated, it starts to affect their eyes. So that means you've had that for a minute. Let's continue. General symptoms of ocular syphilis include red eyes, spots in your vision, aka eye floaters, eye pain, lights, sensitivity to light, abnormal eye movements, blurred vision or vision loss, lesions on the eyes, and painless sores on the eyelid, according to Cleveland Clinic. On April the 24th at the 2024 Epidemic Intelligence Service Conference, researchers presented a new study finding that there were more than two dozen cases with these kinds of symptoms in Chicago last year, with a third of these cases being in the early stages of the infections, CNN reported. Although vision loss is a symptom that can be associated with syphilis, it is typically only seen at much later phases. That's what I said. For it to manifest, for it start, for it to start affecting your eyes, that means the carrier had that for a while. The study stated that the most common symptoms reported to patients were headache, personality changes, altered mental status, and eye problems like vision loss light sensitivity or eye swelling per the outlet now you hear a lot of people talking about their mental health and i'm not being funny at all that's why you need to go get regular medical checkups because if you're experiencing mental issues especially if you never had them don't just be thinking oh you're, you're feeling a little depressed or down it might be something else especially if you're very sexually active you know how people you know they're gonna do them they're living their best life, and they they think that includes having random hookups with people you don't even, you barely know their first name. Do you know how dangerous that is? And I'm not just saying dangerous as in, you know, you could be going to bed with a psycho, and I'm not just talking about men, men, women too. You could be going to bed with a straight. I'm not talking about men just being psycho. You can go to bed with women who are psychos. But, um... Your health, these, do you know they're there or STDs that they're not really talking about, but they don't have um, the correct or they, had, they haven't created or discovered the right medication to combat these STDs? The, basically, they don't have, you go to the doctor with some kind of STD they're not familiar with. They don't even have a medication to treat it. So you, you, you're, thinking, you're thinking a little harder about these little random hookups just because somebody looks fine don't mean they can look fine on the outside, but how are their insides? Some of these people don't even bathe regularly, but that's a whole different video in itself. Or wash their hands regularly after every use. Some of these people are not, they are not pro-hygiene. Some of these people are hygiene illiterate, and that's real talk. Let's continue. So again, if you are experiencing some kind of depression, some kind of mental change, and it's not normal, you, you need to go check and see if you, you got an STD that's affecting your mental status. Let's continue. They're not the most specific symptoms, which is why it's really important that providers are doing appropriate screening and asking patients for risk factors. Additionally, a CDC case report published November 2020. 23 also revealed a cluster of five cases of ocular syphilis in Michigan, all in women with a common male sexual partner. So you guys are, 
you're sharing more than um, his phallus. <laughs> mm, let's go on. And then some of these people are intentionally infecting people, and then some don't even know they have it. The five women age 40 through 60. Oh, my goodness. You would think that these women would be a little more, but no, 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 no. Let me, let me stop because um, you don't necessarily have to have um, intercourse intercourse to get this this um infection you can just it's, uh, uh, skin openings you know so they could have been doing some heavy petting or you know with, with most of their clothes clothes off and pass some stuff through because you, your body is constantly secreting body fluids your eyes your ears your mouth saliva you're constantly secreting sweat your pores let's continue the five women aged 40 through 60 all received the diagnosis of ocular syphilis after reporting symptoms including blurred vision, headache, hearing loss, double vision, eye floaters, and light sensitivity. Patients are very surprised and most of the lay public doesn't think of syphilis involving the eye. While syphilis is on the rise, the CDC cautions that it cannot be spread through toilet seats. <laughs> How many people use the public toilet? Okay. Let's go on. Doorknobs are even from sharing utensils. The best way to avoid syphilis is by avoiding contact with the sores caused by the infection. So the CDC recommends using condoms if you are sexually active. Although contact with the sores in areas not covered by a condom can still spread the disease. So you covering his penis, but you know, what if he has sores around the genitalia or on his stomach or on his hands or on his feet? I, I think they usually have the, the, the sores around in the um, genital area. But sometimes, you know, you know, oh my God, these movies and these movies don't help y'all at all. You know, how many scenes have you seen with of, of the character just randomly hooking up with some dude or a woman, and then after they do the do, they jump up out of the bed. First, they go at it like lustful dogs with no self-control. Then they jump up out of the bed or wherever they were, don't wash their hands, don't, 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 do, don't do anything. Just throw on their clothes and walk out. And then most of the times they go to work or go take... <laughs> God, go handle some business. And, and you never see anybody shower. Nah, I'm gonna say all of them, but you know, most of them they want they don't they want the scene to be so damn hot and heavy that it, it's nasty, it's gross. Just jump your little nasty ass out of the bed, don't wash your hands, don't do anything, and walk out the door. You know how I many people I, I I worked around and came to work smelling like sex? That is a distinctive smell. Nothing else smells like it. The dude comes smelling like a woman body part. Or the woman comes smelling like, come on now, let's not play like you don't know what that smells like. The current syphilis epidemic of the past 10 or 15 years started amongst men who have sex with other men. He says, I, I don't know who this doctor is, but I guess it's a doctor or expert said. But no surprise, it has then moved beyond men who had sex with men to involve men who have sex with women and women who have sex with men and other groups as well because people don't exclusively partner with one kind of sex partner or another. Yeah, they don't do that nowadays. Um, well, they never did it, but they had a little more discretion. But here's the thing. Uh, in case you men, before you men start running your mouth, do you know that more, the way women catch diseases is through a man, right? Most of the time. 90, 90 something percent of the time. They're getting diseases through you. So before you get mad, let's go on. Or they're getting diseases from you. Let's go on. In addition to an overall rise in syphilis cases, the country has also seen an increase in women getting the STI as well as a rise in congenital syphilis, which is when a mother with syphilis passes the infection to her unborn baby. According to the CDC, cases of congenital syphilis in the United States have more than tripled in recent years, although the disease was once nearly eliminated. 
For example, the Houston Department, the Houston Health Department reported this week that there was a 128% increase in congenital syphilis in Houston and Harris County, a rise that is similar to that of other cities across the United States. Congenital syphilis rates are now higher than they've been in the United States in more than 25 years. There are several reasons for that, Hook says. One is that this mirrors the general increase in syphilis and the movement of the syphilis epidemic from men who have sex with men into heterosexual population. Second is that women with syphilis are disproportionately ethnic minorities, racial minorities, and those are people who have less ready access to health care than other populations, he continues. So if you look at the simplest rates in the U.S., you'll see that the rates have gone up disproportionately among Hispanic women and black women, the same groups who have other challenges with regards to access to health care, prenatal care, etc., Although cases in women are rising, Hook assures that these rates do not mean that women are more susceptible to syphilis. It is not vulnerable. It is not a vulnerability issue. He stresses, there is no data whatsoever to suggest that one group or another is more vulnerable to acquiring syphilis than others. Hook emphasizes that the national rate of syphilis cases could easily be lowered if there was greater investment in public health in the U.S. That is, a, excuse my French, but that is a damn shame that this country boasts on being the, the richest and most powerfulest, but you lack in so many important areas. One, housing. Two, health. It's sad. Let me put this out there for you. Those who have ears to hear it, listen. One way you can decrease and have a better chance at not catching any of these things is to keep your legs closed and keep your pants zipped up. That's real talk. We are not animals. We have self-control. And sometimes, some of you guys, let's be real with it. Sometimes you do all this bed hopping because you ain't got nothing else better to do. Or you're, you're feeding some kind of insecurity you have. And then you hook up with these strangers and it makes the insecurity more deeper. You're looking for something to fill that void and it's not happening. You may be satisfied for a little bit, but then it comes back and it comes back stronger. So it's up to you. If y'all want to keep running in the hospital and doctors and getting these shots and taking these medications that most likely lowering your immune system and not to mention what these STDs are doing to your immune system, especially when it, you have it for a long time. It's messing you up, especially women. It's really messing you up. Your organs are on the inside. And sometimes it takes longer for you to realize what you have. I took medical assisting in the 90s so it takes longer for women to know what's going on with their bodies than men you know it's like stop looking for what you're where you know what you know you're missing in someone else's body you're not gonna find it you're gonna you're gonna find something in their bodies but it's not gonna be what you've been looking for and then some of you guys are just playing Russian roulette. Some of you guys are living very dangerously because you don't value your body. You don't value yourself. Because be real with you, if you valued yourself, you wouldn't be bed hopping. And I'm speaking to men too. You need to value yourself too. Because when, when you really want to settle down with that person, you men, that one person you know in your heart that's for you, who is for you, what you gonna have to give her? A whole bunch of bodies attached to that penis? Believe it or not, some women do care about men who have been, you know, do care whether or not the men they get with and spend their lives with, you know, has a lot of bodies attached to that their bodies or that male member that you value more than life itself. They do care. Men, you aren't the only ones that, you know, you know, think twice when a woman talks about how many men she laid with we think about it too how many how many women you've been with and i don't see it as a good thing i don't know how these how, how these women take care of themselves 
I don't know what's going on inside their bodies. I don't know how many of these women you lay with, you use the condom with. How many of you actually use condoms nowadays? Ugh, God. All right. Well, I hope this information was valuable to you. And pass it on to people that you know like to get their freak off in the most craziest, absurd ways. Or even the ones who are not crazy and absurd, just, you know, the so-called um, prim and proper people who like to get their freak off. They need to know. Take more time in choosing the people that you're going to give your body to than the time you take in choosing what kind of outfit you're going to wear, what kind of shoes you're going to rock. All right. Peace out. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for your support and your subscriptions. Thank you. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you. And see you in the next video.